But that brings us to the last method that we can uh, use here to compute a QR matrix decomposition, and that is through the use of Givens rotations. Now, Givens rotations is actually developed by uh, Givens, and that, that's why it's called Givens rotations. This individual was someone who particularly focused on uh, numerical or computational mathematics, and so it's really designed to kind of give you the best of both worlds, and to be quick, and also to have good numerical stability. And so we're going to follow a very similar general procedure to a householder, except these are rotation matrices now, not uh, dealing with reflections or anything else like that from before. Each one of these GN matrices is not going to zero out an entire column below the diagonal, uh, like what happened with householder, but instead it's going to zero out one matrix element below the diagonal at a time. So we're going to actually need to find more of these GN matrices than QN matrices with householder, and that might seem a little bit weird. We, we need to find more uh, matrices, so it should be slower, right? Well, not quite, because the two benefits, as I already mentioned from before, is enhanced numerical stability. Again, we'll have a conversation about that in the future, but we're going to get increased computation speed, and you'll see that here in a moment. And so when we take a copy of our R matrix like we did from before, we're going to need to compute GN matrices to zero out this A21 value, this A31 value, and the A32 value to get to that upper triangular form. Let's see that uh, in some action and break down the code. But before we do that, recall with Gram-Schmidt, we're using projections as a means of generating our orthonormal matrix or our orthonormal set of vectors. With Householder, we were using reflections to generate our orthonormal matrix, or again, orthonormal sets of vectors. And then with this last method here, we're using rotations. And so we're doing very, very similar things to get to the same result, but the way that we're going about doing it is just slightly different. And there are benefits and pros and cons to each of these. And so it really does pay to understand your transformations. You'll see that in a moment. But before we can actually use uh, Givens rotations, we need a quick refresher of our trigonometry because that's going to be the key factor in doing this decomposition with Givens rotations. So here you have a right triangle, A, B, and C right here. You'll recall your Pythagorean theorem, hopefully, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then, of course, your relationship for sine and cosine for this right triangle right here. We're going to utilize all of this knowledge right here to perform this decomposition. And we're going to do that with rotation matrices. Here is a two by two rotation matrix using sines and cosines. The same sines and cosines that you see right here for this right triangle, okay? And you can see that also in three dimensions for x, y, and z. Also, going down the whole rabbit hole of rotation matrices is interesting enough in of itself, but I'll leave that for you to do. Here are just uh, what some of these look like. And here's the code that we're going to use. You can see, again, we have two functions. And this first function here is accepting an A scalar and a B scalar, just like you saw from before with regards to our right triangle here. And, it's, and that function is going to produce our sines and cosines that we're going to use to do the decomposition. And so with this function right here, the first thing that we're doing with A and B is we're computing our hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. Then we're getting our cosine, and then we're getting a minus a sine. We're returning both of those. I will note here, though, that if you go ahead and check out a bunch of the references, this is actually an incomplete function. This function will actually run into some uh, problems mathematically for you. I'll leave that as an exercise uh, or an extracurricular exercise for you to do. It's actually pretty interesting, but I'll just give you a quick hint here, and I'll say think about discontinuities. Moving on to the second function, QR Givens, which accepts our A matrix. You can see we have effectively the same setup as we used to uh, set things up for Householder. This is effectively what we have. Instead of our QN matrix, we have a GN matrix, which is G1. That's originally going to be our identity matrix. And as we change the values of our cumulative G matrix, we are going to go ahead and be changing the values of our R matrix as we go along. And then we're just going to transpose this entire, this product of all these GN matrices as a means for us to get our Q matrix just like we did with Householder. And so let's actually break down this code right here because there's a lot less of it, 
but it's a little bit more confusing and it's certainly not pep8 as uh, two of these lines are very very long uh, that's more of something for you python programmers out there but anyways we have these two loops right here and you can see that we're doing one right after the other this first loop is looping over our columns the second loop is looping over our rows the first thing that we're doing is we are getting our sines and cosines plugging in different values of our R matrix. Let's take a look at what those values actually are. So here we have our A matrix, which again, for our first GN matrix, is just going to be the same as our A matrix. These are the two values we're going to be plugging in. We're going to be plugging in our value that's along the diagonal, and then the value below the diagonal that we want to be zeroed out. In this case, it's A21. We're going to compute our hypotenuse using a11 squared plus a21 squared is equal to c squared and then once we have that we can use both of these values to compute sine and cosine sine is going to be a21 by our hypotenuse and cosine theta is going to be a11 by our hypotenuse then what we're going to do is we're going to take those sine and cosine values and rather than actually compute a qn matrix we're going to plug them into these two long lines right here and these lines are very confusing so let's look at them one at a time in depth the first line is only strictly changing the rows of our r matrix we're going to be setting the ith row of our r matrix equal to that same row times cosine theta minus the jth row by sine theta. Then we're going to do something very similar, but just swap things around. We're going to set the jth row of our R matrix equal to the sum of our ith row by sine theta and the jth row by cosine theta. These are all just scalars multiplied by the rows of our matrices. We're not doing any particular matrix multiplication. The important bit with this is that both of these need to execute at the same time. That's why you see them in the same exact line of code split by a comma. We're going to do a very similar thing with our GN matrix, which I've left the variables as Q from householder, so hopefully that doesn't confuse you. In hindsight, I should have changed it to G, but in any event, we're doing effectively the same thing, but we're doing that with the columns of our G matrix, or in this case, Q. We're going to set the ith column of our Q matrix equal to the ith column by cosine theta minus the jth column by sine theta. Then for the jth column, we're going to set that equal to the ith column of our Q matrix by sine theta plus the jth column of our Q matrix by cosine theta. And again, these need to execute at the same time. That's why in the code right here, you see them again, all part of the same line. So although these lines are much longer, it is necessary, okay? And we're doing that for each one of the elements that we need to zero out below the diagonal for our R matrix. And so to compute G2, we're going to be plugging in A11 and A31 because we need to zero out whatever value is in that A31 position. So we're going to then compute our hypotenuse with Pythagorean theorem. We're going to go ahead and generate our sines and cosines. And then we're just going to put them through this same process except with the different sines and cosines. Then we're going to also need G3 here. But G3 is going to be to zero out A32. And so we're going to pass in the next value along our diagonal in order to do that so it's going to be a22 squared plus a32 squared is equal to our hypotenuse squared we're going to get our sines and cosines and again we're going to put it through this process here of just multiplying rows and columns of our matrices by the sine and cosine scalars and so when we take a look at the results that's what gives it this really fast processing time of 230 milliseconds. Again, compare that to Householder, we have 908 milliseconds. So Givens is much, much faster, and again, we still get the benefit of enhanced numerical stability. But it's even faster than Graham Schmidt as well. Again, check out all the values. They're all exactly the same, because this is all for the same randomly generated A matrix. But back over here in the code, I want to just quickly go through and add in the print statements again just so you can see what's going on right here. 
what I want to do right here is I want to print out that R matrix for you so you can see what's happening with each one of these iterations that we're doing. We only need three of them right here because we're only doing a total amount of iterations for the amount of values we need to zero out below our diagonal. So let's print out our R matrix. And you can see right here we have three different matrices in the terminal. The first matrix has this R21 position zeroed out. Then we have that R21 position zeroed out from before, along with, below that, a value on order of 10 to the negative 16, and we can effectively just round that to being zero. Then again, you can see right here, for this R23 position, we have zero. And that's exactly what we want. We need three, so we need three different iterations to go through and do that for this three by three case. And again, just as a check, you can see that both of these are uh, identity matrices uh, for Q by Q transpose and Q transpose by Q. The other thing that we could do also, and you can see it's all uh, just a zero matrix with two values that are very close to zero. Again, we could round those just to f effectively be zero. So everything for this code checks out. Again, you need these lines for R and Q to work. But who would have thought that uh, the method developed by somebody who had uh, numerical mathematics or a computation in mind would develop uh, the most efficient method as a means to do this?